Paula Marie, the Ebony Biz Diva. I'm a speaker, author, educator, podcaster, and online business trainer. I'm the queen of Free 99. I train and support business owners on the Free 99 options that will help their businesses operate saving money while making money. Hey, 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 how are you? Um, So I wanted to jump on really quickly, or not so quickly. (laughs) I wanted my videos to be around 15 minutes, right? However, I want to make sure that you get the nuts and the bolts that you need for free, because I've paid for all of the information that I've given you. So I wanted to make sure that I was giving you all the information. (laughs) Yay. <laughs> well, I always forget to turn my ring light on. I don't know what it is. So what I want to do today is I want to really dive deep into um, landing pages and how significant landing pages are and how you can use landing pages along with a dedicated website if you choose. Or if you just want to do landing pages because you just want to point people to where you want to point them, right? And you can create landing pages. Well, first of all, let me explain what a landing page is. A landing page is when you click on a link and instead of it going to a whole website where you have the links at the top that say um, about gallery, prices, um, whatever, uh, events, you know, that that's a typical website. So that's typical website speak, right? And you get to categorize what those options are to open up the different pages, right? And it's a whole situation. I have several websites, but I also find that when I am working specifically with one um, product, like the 10 day free 99 challenge, the link took you directly to a website. And the link was a bit.ly link. I don't know if you peeped that. (laughs) So the bit.ly link that I created took you directly to the landing page because the landing page has like the whole long drawn out URL. And I just wanted something really quick that spoke to the, the subject of the page. So the landing page was really nitty gritty. This is what you get. This is what I need. You plugged in your information, you hit submit, and then you received an automated email. And you can create an automated email that says thank you, or then you can create a line of automation, which is what I'm doing with you. There are 10 automations for each of the 10 days, and each automation is a different day with your video on it. So I use the free 99. link for I mean uh, website for that and I use MailChimp I like MailChimp Um, there's a couple of other free 99 uh, sites you can use and that's on your list of 100 plus um, apps and webs to use for your uh, businesses but I like MailChimp there's no difference I think in any of these apps it's just what works for your comfortability and is always what um, you can grasp onto. Because again, if it's an amazing system with all the bells and whistles, but you don't know how to ring the bells or blow the whistles, <laughs> then you're spending money unnecessarily. And will I stay with, with MailChimp? Probably not. I've been with them for two years. I really like them. Um, I'm, my business is leveled up, but I still like them. I really do. And they've grown a lot in the two years. So I like how they've grown. You can still get your analytics. I can see how many clicks are on each page. I can see um, what percent of my emails go out that were clicked on. And then it gives me the option to resend them to the ones that didn't click on those emails. I, I like it. You know, it works for me and the comfortability of 
my businesses and I use them for all of my businesses. So not just one, but all of them. So anyway, I'm going to share my screen and let's get into it, baby. Let's get into this, uh, this MailChimp. And hopefully the internet will be on our side today because you know the internet be playing. All right. So you can see I have it at the top of my URLs here. These are like my the ones that I go to a lot. Okay, <laughs> the ones I go to a lot. So I can click here, but I open Mailchimp a lot because I'm I'm building a lot of pages and I'm also updating links. Um, I remind myself like maybe every every like month or so to update links. Um, and then if I have to go in and update links earlier than that, then I move my reminder out like another four weeks just to remind me to update links. So oh, I think my screen is hiding. Yeah, <laughs> screen is hiding. All right, so I'm already logged and loaded and ready to go. So I'm gonna click on campaigns. It's probably going to ask me to log in again. So I'm gonna move me here. And so uh, these are all of my campaigns. So campaigns are, if you look on this list right here on the left-hand side, you'll see a list of it can be an email, it can be an automation, it can be a landing page, it can be postcards, social posts, surveys. They have surveys. This is new. Social posts are posts that you can create that will um, directly post onto your social media accounts. And then you can also run ads through them and they're linked with your social media accounts and Google. Um, I really like the way that it, it's con it, it's it's laid out. Um, your campaigns are all of the emails that you put together. And your automations are the automations that you are receiving. I put those automations up and every time there's a trigger or every time someone clicks on a link that I've set as a trigger, it will start the automation process for them. So I don't manually have to send in these emails. And some people have an automation system that's for the whole entire year, for the whole, I'm, I'm like halfway through that on one of my sites. Like I'm like halfway through it. I have certain posts that post at certain days and times and I have um, certain posts that, um, that are a part of my nurture sequence and a nurture sequence is one that allows you to stay in touch with your audience, not sell to your audience 100%, but to stay in touch with them and make sure that um, they are interested in what you're doing and they remain interested. And then your audience would be your list. Um, and then your brand would be your templates, managed websites, managed domains, and studio content. Studio content, this is where all of your images are housed. So every time you upload a document or uh, you share something across with the doc, uh, Google Doc, uh, it houses it there. And then you can also connect your domain to your landing page. So I actually did that for the Pinterest workshop that I have coming up. The Pinterest workshop, I created a free 99 domain. Uh, well, damn near free 99 domain. <laughs> I think it was 99 cents. So I create, I, I bought a 99 cent domain and um, it points towards the Paula's private Pinterest, uh, Paula's Pinterest pivot workshop. And so when you type in www, Paula's Pinterest pivot uh, 2020, I think, um, dot club, because we're a club, um, it points you directly to this. You can also have multiple pages within MailChimp. So I'm going to click here, going to log out, and then I'm going to open up another page. Now, all my stuff, uh, wrong thing. Let's go to this one. Now, before I hit login, I want you to look here. 
MailChimp has a lot of very interactive, um, descriptive, informative um, how to's. They have a lot of stories, they have a lot of videos. So, all of these companies are invested in teaching you how to do the things that you want to do when you level up. And that's why a free 99 apps and sites are worth it because when you don't know, you don't know until you do. And once you do, then you know what you need to know to level up. And so in order for us to be able to blow the whistle and be able to ring the bells on all of these websites that offer like all of these options, you have to learn what you want and what you don't want. I just learned fully automations myself from just going in and creating emails weekly or every couple of weeks to my audience. And then I just played with it a little bit. And I gave myself the time to do it because my business was in the startup phase. You don't need all the bells and the whistles in the startup phase. You're still learning. And so, um, and it becomes overwhelming when you do that. So I just wanted to, to offer this uh, little bit because the best part about Free 99 is that it allows you the time and the opportunity to learn and grow your business and in learn and grow um, the needs of your business so that you can decide what you do want to pay for so you don't waste those funds. Let's go in here. I'm going to hit login. Oop, it's moving. That means the, the internet gods are shining. Sipping on my coffee. Coffee. Alrighty, so it automatically goes to my audience. It, it wants me to know like who my audience is. Um, and then it gives you the analytics. Now, tags are how you can segment your audience in MailChimp world. So there's a tag for every um, person that's in my audience. They're not just like a, a contact. I've either placed them um, specifically where I got them. So if they were part of my Etsy and I, I moved them over from my Etsy, then I, they're part of this Etsy tag. If they're a customer because they purchased, they may be here. And this is a hodgepodge of a lot of different things. Um, my Square, which is another site that I use, it's another free 99 site that I use. Um, I have 73 of those audience members are tagged to that. And um, DMV just means that these are like my DMV people. I live in uh, the DC, Maryland, Virginia area, which is commonly known as the DMV. And so I do have a couple of clients on here that they're not um, online clients for me. They're like people I see in the street. So if, if I, and this is for my natural um, skin and hair products line. So if they're friends that support me and they do purchase Paula's Whip quite commonly. So um, I do want to keep them in the loop because they're, every client needs to be on your email list. I don't care if they're on your Facebook and y'all are friends. I don't care if they're on your page. I don't care if you, they go to your church. You need to capture their information and you need to plug them into the list. You need to have a way to connect with them so that you can connect one way to everybody so that you keep them in the loop and you nurture them and you feed them. So, and then over here, it gives me my growth and where my contacts are coming from. And so right now I'm really hustling um, my square. And so I have my square links, I'm sorry, my MailChimp links of the landing pages and my square page. So when they click on my products or they're clicking on certain things, they can click on a link that I put on the page and it will take them directly to the landing page that I've built. And I don't have to create multiple pages for every place I'm at because you want to be in multiple places. Same thing if you were to post on LinkedIn or you were to post on um, your um, Link Pro link on um, your Linktree link. Link Pro is another one. I'll, I'll get into that a little later. That's comparable to Linktree. But you can have all your multiple links. 
you want to be able to give people specific links. You don't want them to go to a page and then have to look and search for the link. They will, they will walk away. Um, and then 3% are admin ads. And my admin ads are just me placing those links in um, strategically. And then paid feature, I don't get into that. Email marketing, it tells you where your top locations are. Um, and so this is where I am. So my top locations are here. <laughs> so, and then often the percent that they, they are engaged and that they open and sometimes, and this number has gone down because my internet marketing for this has gone down. Um, I've done a lot of online social media marketing. So I need to step up my game. The less emails I send, the more this number will go down, right? I've noticed that in my business. And so you really want to take a look at your analytics so that you can grow. And then let's go into uh, campaigns. So when it comes to the campaigns, which are just the emails and the landing pages that you build, you can segment these. Um, you can go to directly to just your emails. And these are the emails that I send out. And a lot of my emails that um, receive my emails, the recipients that receive my emails, um, for the most part, they open them. Like, let's just go back to my audience so that we can get a gauge of like my audience. So I have 176 contacts, right? So let's go back to campaigns. And that's just, it's really, really a small number. I've really, really focused on jumping that up this year. And I've seen a huge increase um, in the last couple of months because I've been very conscious about um, directing people to the sign up page. Um, I give all of my new subscribers a discount. So it incentivizes them a lot. So this email, that was sent in June, it was sent to 131. Um, and then this one was sent to 164, and this one was sent to 126. So you can see that the number grows as, um, as I start to build. So let's just go like from March. From March, 65 uh, recipients were sent. And then it jumps all the way up to double. So I have double the amount. It also tells you like the number of clicks that were sent. Um, so 34% opened, but it also gives you the percent of the clicks. And you want at least about 10% is the, the number that you really want to fight for, but that's such a high number. So let's put that in perspective. If your typical click range is gonna be around maybe three to 5%, maybe, right? Cause that's where my click range is, right? Um, then I need to, this one was high, this was almost 10%. So sometimes I get there, this was high, this was seven and a half percent. Sometimes I get there, sometimes I don't. You know, it really depends on the subject matter. It depends on the the, the um, subject line. If the subject line catches their attention, I don't know if February 30% is a, a subject line that, that grabs them. Um, so all of those things you, you can use to analyze future emails to make sure that you build a really great email. And I'm really thinking about working on um, an automation email workshop because I the information that I'm learning as I move through this Pinterest world is redefining and, and giving me more um, information on how to fine tune my emails. So emails are different than automation. So what you're receiving every day in this challenge is part of an automation. And so I have an automation for birthdays, which on this particular website, I do ask for birthdays because I give away um, discounts on birthdays. And so I, I, do, I do a free shipment message. I make sure that people are aware that they can get that. And I had to pause it 
So that's the other thing. You can pause an email. You can have an email that you're like, oh, this isn't working or it's outdated. You can just go in and you can pause it. You know, I have a welcome email. That's part of my nurture sequence. So when they sign up, I give them, I, they automatically get this welcome email. And so I, I need to build this welcome email out a little bit more because the welcome email needs to be part of a whole nurture sequence that I design. And I'm working on that now. I'm actually itemizing the order of the, nur of the nurture sequence and the types of um, things that I do want to talk about and how I do want to um, place those in there. And the thing that I like most about the nurture sequence is that um, you can change the order up when you work on those. Then we have landing pages. So um, actually, let me go back to automation. And I'm just going to open this email. Let me see. I always get confused on which way to open it because you can view the report. Oh, well, let's look into it. So this is my welcome email that everyone gets. And I started it about a year and a half ago <laughs> at 1.42 a.m. because there's no sleep <laughs> for us entrepreneurs. Um, so half of the subscribers have actually um, completed the email. Um, there was 276 cent, 128 have opened the email for that. And there won't be any uh, dollar range for orders because this is not a buy more. You can't upsell every email. Some emails have to be information. Some emails have to educate. Some emails have to, there's a whole list of things that your emails need to do in order to really lock into it. So it tells you the open rate. It tells you, I'm gonna move me away. There you go. Um, and then I have three unsubscribe here. Now, let me tell you about unsubscribes, because when I first started and someone would unsubscribe, I would clutch my pearls, right? Because you, oh my God, somebody doesn't like me. Somebody doesn't like my product. But I have learned, <laughs> child, I have learned, honey, that um, it's okay if they don't like me, because that means that they were not my ideal client. And so I want to talk to my ideal client. I don't want them to take up space for someone who is my ideal client. So it's okay. So be aware that you're going to have people that will unsubscribe. And it's okay. It's okay. Um, two bounced emails means they didn't reach a destination. So I have uh, two emails on this that we're not working and then three unsubscribes it's okay and then it gives you a monthly report where you can see like your emails that were sent and then through time you can see like you know i sent emails in august and then you know what was what was i doing this was the time period i wasn't doing jack i will tell you <laughs> i wasn't doing anything one little tiny email was sent in October, one little tiny, two little tiny emails. And then, you know, I started to get my life again in February. And then I dipped down in March. And the reason I dipped down in March was because I was selling a lot of products. So I was making a lot of product and I was also working on the marketing. I now have someone to help me with that. So it helps me out. And then I got my life in April. And in May, I really got my life. <laughs> I really got my life. And then June, I got my life. So um, I have two workflow emails and those are automations. So workflow and automations, those two terms are the same in MailChimp world. And this is a new subscriber. So this email automatically sends when someone clicks on the link or, or or fills out that page. So when they fill out that page and they hit submit, they're automatically going to get this new subscriber email, right? And then four days later, they're going to get a reminder. Um, and those are the two work uh, automations that I have. It also tells you like how many open this up. So I've got to really fine tune 
um, cause it looks like I'm, I'm pretty much at 50% and then the 25% uh, reminder is probably at like, I don't know, 20% maybe. So I really have to 30%. So I really have to, um, go back into my workflow emails and just kind of rejudge them a little bit. And I have a reminder set for that. So that is the report that you get. And then you can click here, you can switch to any of the other reports. I literally love MailChimp. I love MailChimp, I love everything about MailChimp. I just do, I just do. So I'm gonna go back, because we clearly didn't get to open up that email. And then we're gonna go here, click, and then we're gonna edit. And it's a birthday field, so you can open this up for automations. They have a preset um, template for automating birthdays so that you can continue your nurture sequence. So this is one of the ways that I continue. I asked a specific question in the list of items that I, um, of the information I, re I retained from them, and then I use that information to be able to send a follow-up email. And who doesn't like to get stuff on their birthday? I don't care if it's a, hey, happy birthday, and it's a poem. I don't care if it's a, hey, happy birthday, like this is what you should do today. This, hey, happy birthday, do 10% off. Everybody likes something on their birthday, right? So I want to view the email. So we're going to view it. And so when you create an email <clears throat> on MailChimp, um, or a landing page, whatever you create. You get to see what it looks like from a desktop and you wanna build it out in desktop. But before you publish, go to the mobile to see what it looks like on your mobile phone. Scroll up a little bit. You wanna be able to see how things are pushed together and, and compacted. You really wanna see what does it look like? Because most of the time your subscribers are gonna see this on their phone. And then you also wanna see what does this look like on an email, from an email perspective, how many people are, are going to, to see it? What does it look like? Because each view is going to be slightly different. And so you definitely want to make sure that you are looking at all of them to make sure, uh-oh, looks like the internet is, acting up again. Let me go back to mobile. Inbox. And it'll tell you here. It'll say, see how your campaign looks in different email clients so you can feel extra confident before you send. Monthly users receive 25 inbox preview tokens each month. Pro users receive 100. So that's part of um, their upsell to get you to go to the pro. Um, but again, I'm using free 99. <laughs> so. so that's what your campaign will look like. Um, if we were to create, this will populate and you get to fill out what is it that you want. Do you want a sign up sheet? Is it a pop up? And remember, every, each one of these will have their own URL that you can paste inside of any place. You can paste this link in your link tree on um, Instagram. You can place this link in your Bitly and create a shorter Bitly link that will take them directly to the sign up page. So if your driver is, hey, sign up to receive 15%, copy the link to that sign up page on MailChimp, create a Bitly link if you need it, and use that. When they click on it, it goes directly to page. So I really like it. I've become very comfortable with it. Um, let's go to sign up. Let's go to sign up. So when you sign up, it'll ask you if you want to embed the form, if it's a pop-up form, or just a sign up landing page. So we're going to go to, um, and let me explain, an embedded form is a form that you create but you copy the link and you can embed it inside of another website or another entity. And if you have the option to embed that link, 
It's a short way for people to click on it and go directly to this page that you're creating. A pop-up page is just that. It's going to pop up. It's going to fly across the screen. Um, and those are cute if that's the first thing that you want people to know uh, and see. And then they have the option to click off of it. But if they click on it, it takes them to this landing page that you're creating, right? And then your sign up page is going to be what you did to sign up for the 10 day challenge. So, and the name of your audience is going to be the name of, you only get one name. So you have to be very clear about who this particular MailChimp account is for. And this is for my, my tribe. So I'm going to hit tribe. And it says you'll be able to segment your audience by sign up source to target people who subscribe from your embedded form. So I wonder if you can do the same thing. You'll be able to organize your audience based on contacts who sign up for your landing page. So it always gives you an, um, an, a way to further place these people into a different segment or population. So this population would be, um, let's say I'm creating a discount page for a 10% off coupon. So it's a, line, a landing page and we're gonna place the name and I'm just gonna put 10% um, discount page and then we're gonna begin. So it's gonna take you to a, a couple of selections so that you can pick your template. There's going to be free selections that are you can choose from, and then there's going to be, of course, templates that are a little bit of an upgrade, but um, you have to level up from. What I will tell you is the upgrade is going to be you making the upgrade based off of the images that you use, and you now know how to use, how to get really great images, right? You, <laughs> you know how to edit those images, so you can get some really great images and video you know now how now know how to create the content for video so roll up and then i i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to do grow list it's simple it's easy right now look at how base this is this is so base so base everybody's like oh my god this is so base but we're going to make it amazing right I'm going to show you how we're going to make this thing amazing. <clears throat> and this is also part of the things that I do when I work with clients one on one is we create, uh, we select the systems that work for them. And then we create what uh, we need to use those systems for and how we're going to use those systems. So kind of hold your hand through it. Um, and so I have already designated a logo so this logo populates on each item or campaign that i build okay whether it's a landing page or an email or an automation or a survey it automatically populates to that page and so let's scroll down there's the logo there's a link and then there are these marketing questions. And when you are obtaining information, when you are getting people's emails, telephone numbers, you need to also receive their permission. So they get to tell you how they want to be marketed to, which is email, direct mark, mail, and or customized, customized online advertising. And you can they can always subscribe because there's always going to be something at the bottom of each one of your emails that little tiny subscribe button, check out an email that you've, getting, you've been given. Everybody has it, doesn't matter where the email comes from, or someone can subscribe. And so they may only want what you offer at that time and then walk away, and it's okay, right? And they may, the majority will not. So the majority will not, as long as you're advertising and you're using the right SEO words to highlight what you're doing, you will be fine. So <clears throat> because this is preset, excuse me, <coughs> doesn't mean you got to live in it. So I'm going to click this and you see to the side, we can make this smaller if we want. We can make it bigger. 
um, we can replace it. And I'm going to hit replace just so you can see the content studio that I have going on. Um, like I said before, it houses each and every one of your photos. All of your media is housed here inside the content studio. So when you're uploading things and you're adding things, it's like a portal for all of that. Wow, it's taking so long. I'm going to have to push this along. I guess everybody is on these internet streets right about now. And when you click on, uh, and media takes a long time to upload, just FYI. So when you are uploading media, it takes a long time. And it says it's unresponsive. Come on. Let's go. There you go. All right. So you can see, like, these are all of the images that I've uploaded over the last year or so. Um, and I'm. I could pick one of these. You can also um, create your own. I think what I'm going to do is, I'm going to pick this one. It's text it off, and then we're going to hit insert right in here. And it's going to replace that image. And it always defaults to 100%. You have the option to minimize it slightly. Now, remember, these are emails. So you don't want an email buffering to open because the image is too long. Now, you can place a link for this. So you can hyperlink it, which means that when they click on it inside the email, it takes them to where you want them to go. And these are the last URLs that I've used. So I'm going to go to the main site. So if they click on this, it's going to take them directly to the site so that we can spend that money. And the alt text is where you want people to know what this is. Now, this is how images, remember when we talked about SEO, this is where images are able to pull up during searches so that when they use certain SEO words, those images populate and you have like pages and pages of images. It's because those images have an alt text that links them to the search. So we're going to put, I'm going to put body butters on this. And I, I mix these. I mix these. And I'll put my name. Because anyone that's searching for me specifically is going to put the name of the business. Where did that come from? So sometimes I'll do oil. Sometimes I'll do dry skin. Sometimes, so I do a mix of alt text in my images because one of them is going to hit right so you don't want to always be consistent and use the same one the only very um consistency is paula's whip so if someone's pulling up paula's whip da -da 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 -da, then all of these images are going to pull up because all of these have the alt text or that seo wording behind it and then you save that and then you highlight here. Now, let me tell you, if you don't change these, it won't go anywhere. So you have to physically change these in order for you to be able to publish the page. So you may say, hey, I like this title. I'm going to keep it. It won't allow you to do that. You're going to have to change some part of this, of this text right here in order for um, it to be published. So it may be a big enticing 10% for you. Just, you know, it, just whatever you want. Come on, internet. Yep. So let's go here. Yep. All right, we'll come back to that section. Um, this section here is your wording. So this is where you actually get to um, post like, what words do you want? Maybe you want a, a PDF to, to be here, right? Um, maybe you want a picture to be here. Maybe you want to promote your social media content because your social media is important to you. Or maybe you want to place a video. And if you do have a video, you will have to upload it onto YouTube because most platforms will allow you to share a YouTube video. And let's just do that real quick. 
let's get into it. I like video because video is easy. You're just gonna copy the URL and it tells you it has to be from YouTube or Vimeo. So you go to your YouTube uh, portal, you place a video in here and you place a link in there. You can caption it if you want and then it'll place the text in there, okay? Or you can decide that you didn't want the video. So we're gonna delete it. And maybe you just wanna put a button instead. So you're gonna put a button here instead that says, I don't know, um, join now. And then you're gonna place the URL. Now maybe the join is um, the 25%. Or the ten percent. Maybe the join is it takes them takes them directly to your social media page. So you place that link in there, right? You can also do. You can just play with this. You can play with all of these. If you want to take a payment, if you have connected your payment portal to your Etsy account, then all it will do when you change the product is it will upload from the listing. So because this is Paula's web and it's attached to my Etsy, I'm sorry, my Square store and Square is part of the um, integrated payment platforms. They use Stripe, they use a number of different platforms. So whatever your payment platform, once you integrate it, it's very easy. Let's say we're gonna sell, I don't know, let's sell, some black cherry and we're going to do the oil so we're going to insert that and then you can also drop and drag files as well if that's what you choose to do right so it's very interactive how you can build and create um, a particular your page just because you start with a, a, a base template doesn't mean it can't grow into anything you can also change your background so you want to be able to change your background, move around a little bit. And when you change your background, it's going to change the, uh, the background of the whole page, or it can also change the background of each segment that we're building out, each of these different pieces. Come on, Internet, let me move. I got things to show. And then the last thing, once we get out of this piece, honey, um, is we're going to actually build out the form. What information is important to you as a business owner so that you can um, continue to upsell to them in a different way? So you want to make sure that you're doing all of those things. I'm going to hit this and hopefully it won't let us let us down. Oh, it's still there. So play with these. You can also use these dividers. These dividers are great because um, it creates some space in between. And then you can make these dividers bigger. You can change the color. If you want the color to be a bit bolder, um, the dividers, look at the color change right in here. Or maybe I want a red divider, so I'm going to make it red. So you can play with these dividers too. So play with these images here. It creates space. So let me put a divider here. And I'm gonna make it red because the other one was red. It always defaults to that kind of grayish color. So here is the actual form. So it's always gonna be an email, right? I mean, this is where you're going to build your sign up form for this particular page. But do you want first and last name or do you just want the first name? Are you going to be mailing things to them? Because if, if you have a business where you physically mail things, you use um, that type of marketing, then you would like to get their address as well. Phone number and birthday. All right. And I, all of these are required for me. So all of these are required. Um, if you give them the option, they will not click. 
I'm telling you. So you don't give them the option and you don't want it to be a deal breaker. Sometimes a last name is a deal breaker. Um, people just don't want to give all that information. And then you require them to fill out one of these. And I'm actually going to take out direct mail because I don't do that. I did it one time. Yeah, it didn't work for me. I did it a second time. Yeah, it didn't work for me. So I'm kind of over it. And then you can add this to an interest group or preferences if that's what you would like. And then the button at the bottom, which says subscribe. So you can actually change this to um, because I always call my peeps my tribe, my Paula's Whip tribe. So they are, I feel like a tribe, they work together, they support each other and, um, and they're close. And I can talk to them about just about anything. So they're my tribe because that's how I handle them. And then it sends them either to a, the confirmation message and it'll show you a pre preview of that, a landing page that you've previously built that is part of the nurture sequence that, that they get automatically. Or maybe they are a web address where you want to send them directly to like a website. Or if it's a Google Doc, a download, you can send them directly to the download. So I really like this. And you can change this. It always defaults to this blue, honey. Always defaults to this blue. I can't stand that blue. Um, that black is a little base for me. Let's get some. All right, here, and then can we round the corners of this box a little bit so it's, yeah, kind of stands out, isn't so basic. Yep, and that is our, oh, uh, we didn't go here. Let's see if it'll let us go here again. Let's just test it out. Hopefully it doesn't freeze us out, but I want it to be cute. Yay! So, and then we're going to change this, um, this button. I swear to God, this button is bothering me. <laughs> what a God, I can't stand it. So when you're changing these colors, a word to the wise is to make sure that you know what this number is, and this is part of your branding. So I'm just pulling up colors that are close to, but I actually know what my letters are uh, my code, my color, my hex code is what it's called, H-E-X codes for my particular brand. So you can just type these in and it'll go directly to it. You can change the position to like the bottom right where there's a little bit of a shadow box. You see how we got some shadow in here and it was a little, it's a little cute. We can change the color of the shadow box to here so that it matches the lemongrass. So you can, you can, you can do a lot of things with this, right? And then you can preview it. So we're gonna preview what we did. And this is what the page looks like if someone were to click on that link on your website, on their uh, laptop. Simple, clean, you know, blah, blah, blah. And this is what it looks like when they click on it on their phone. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. And then you just hit this X to go back to what you did. And then you save it and you close it. But I'm not going to save this because this was just a test. So it's pretty, and this is how you would build out your landing pages, your emails, your automations. They all work the same. This box over here to the right is the exact same. So it works. Um, I love how easy MailChimp works for me. So I'm um, going to hit the back button until I get out of here. And it's just finding that free 99 site that allows you to be able to do all the things that you would like to do. So the last thing that I really, really want to talk about is... Nope. Nope, here it is. Um, 
surveys. So surveys are new. Um, they're very, very new. Let's go to create. Well, let me show you one just for the sake of time. Um, surveys populated about maybe a few months ago. I've used one survey. Um, and I don't use it a lot. I need to use the link more. I need to point people to the survey more and I need to add that to, it's, uh, to my nurture sequence. So the thing that works well with surveys is that people feel valued when you ask them their opinion. You need, also need to ask them what they want so that you can create products and services that meet those needs. Because remember, your business only works if you're providing a solution to their problems. If you, and it's quick and it's accessible and easy. So that's what you, what's going on with this? I know I have a survey or did I, did I delete? Well, let's go to create. So we're gonna go here to create and you can see it's new. And websites are also new here. So MailChimp is stepping up their game, okay? But surveys are also a really easy way for you to capture leads as well. And you can embed these surveys inside of your Facebook business page so that when people click on it, they answer a couple of questions, boom, and you have them. So um, you can title it. Again, it automatically defaults to the title of your audience. If you have an upgraded account, then you can have multiple audiences. I'm not there, I only have one audience. So again, I have to ask myself these questions like, ooh, I can have multiple audiences, but do I need multiple audiences? <laughs> so if that's you, you definitely want to upgrade, but for me, not so much. And so here's where you build a survey. You can decide whether you want to turn it on, but then when you're done collecting data, you turn this off. I love surveys. And then you add questions. And when you add a question, you just hit this add a question and it tells you what format, it, and whether you're providing an email. Is it an open text where they get to actually put together the information um, like verbiage? They get the dialogue with you. Is it a, a range from one to 10? Um, from one to 10, how much do you, does natural, mean to you in the products that you use on your skin and hair. Um, you could do that when you're testing out SEO words. You could test out SEO words with your audience with this. That's another nurture's email. Um, test out those SEO words and say, hey, I want you to rank these words from one to 10 and let me know um, how you feel, how important are they in the products that you purchase. It can be a checkbox, um, and the checkboxes, you kind of put your options here. Um, you can add another question, and it can be the range that we talked about, and they hit this thing, one to 10, you know? And it could be, hey, one to 10. Um, how important is learning how to use Pinterest to market your business effortlessly? Could be that. It could be a uh, radio box where the radio box is, did we do radio box? Oh yeah, we did radio box already. So now we can go in here and we can just change it. We don't have to delete it. We can do check boxes. And then you put your options here and they check and you get to pick which one, which question is an actual required question. So for this one, all of my questions are required. I asked it. So I'm going to make all of my options required. And then you name your survey. And we're just going to put test survey. And then you always want to capture information. So we're going to provide an email, right? And I, this question, I usually say, hey, would you be interested in receiving 10% off uh, for answering this email. Something that they can't refuse, right? Hey, would you be interested in receiving a 50% coupon for answering and, 
as a reward for answering this email. Yeah, and so you want that to be required and they have to ask to subscribe. Very important because when you're retaining, again, people's information, you have to get their permission. You have to, and the system saves it. So then we're gonna hit save and close. And now this is off, because this is just our test, right? This is our test, but it will show you once you open it, how many contacts you, you got, how many of them were your known contacts, they're already in your email list. How many of these are unknown contacts? They're brand new, first timers, uh, they're unknown. And then your brand new, 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 new contacts. I like, and you can always go back, I'm sorry, to here to edit, right? So I, I, I think I have one survey and I don't know if I use it, for, I didn't use it for this account. So anyway, this was a long, e uh, long one. I'm sorry that it took so long, but I just wanted to kind of share like all the bells and whistles of how to use MailChimp to be able to automate. If you're interested in automating your emails, hmm, I think I'm going to create a survey for that and I'm going to place it in the email. So this is how my brain works because I create as I work. So I'm going to go, oh, I'm in the wrong account. <laughs> so I'm going to go to that account. I'm going to create that survey real quick. And if you're interested in automating, learning how to automate, working with automation, then I think that would not be a, a 10 day email challenge. That would actually be a maybe three day workshop. I, I think, or, or a maybe a three day workshop for three weeks. So one week we work on this and then you have the whole week to work on it. And the next week you do more work and you work on this and then we do more work on it. And then the next third week we work on this and then we, we wrap up. Because it's important that you are not rushed and that you have the time to implement. So if you are interested <laughs> in learning about this automation and how this automation works yeah click click on the the survey uh that i'm gonna send out to you and then voila you have it Alrighty, so let me go back and open up my screen move me out the way i'm gonna stop sharing Okay, that's all I got. I know it was long. We talked a lot. I hope you learned a lot. So anyway, have an amazing, amazing, amazing time working on landing pages versus website. And then in the Facebook group, tell me what, what site did you choose? Because I use MailChimp. That don't mean you got to use MailChimp. So just tell me what you use. Just let me know. All right, bye.